Hey everybody, it's Grant, and today we're going over my childhood collection of Pokemon cards. I can't wait to show you what little Grant was doing, and even, you know, it's so vintage, you got this random sticker that I thought was cool, that I put up on my zip-up binder. Yeah, flexing on them children. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully you enjoy this video. Let's see what I collected as a child, and let's get into the video. So I've wanted to make this video for a very long time, but due to the Pokemon pulls and all the things that have happened in 2020 and 2021, this video has gotten pushed back further and further. I also, so comment below, I also want to make a video where I go through each individual card and see what the value of my childhood collection was to see what my uh, young investing skills were all about. And then also, I want to tell you a story about how these Pokemon cards got uh, a little left behind and then found their way back into my hands because, you know, I was a teenage boy. And all of this couldn't come at a better time than right now because I'm about to fly out tomorrow morning to go meet Mr. Aoki himself and we're gonna do a ton of amazing content that I know you're really gonna enjoy. And at the time of this video airing, I'm actually flying back from Vegas so these videos are gonna be a lot sooner than you think. All right, so before we actually show you what's in the binder, I have to tell you a story about this beautiful yellow zipping and sealed binder, okay? When I was young, I collected Pokemon cards and I slowly transitioned into Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, and all of my other favorite animes. Well, as a teenager, uh, my, my parents ended up going through a divorce and we moved from the house we were living in, the house that I was not born in, but the house I was born and brought to and grew up in, and we moved to Lake Charles. So we lived in a city called Sulphur. I was born and raised there. It's a city that's just right over the bridge. And we moved to Lake Charles and uh, I, I guess between the turmoil of whatever was going on in my life as my parents are splitting up, and everything else. I took like my towel, my Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are right there, okay? They're in that cupboard. I'd never let those leave my sight. And um, a few other teenage belongings, maybe that bottle of booze I've been hiding from my mother at this time. And uh, we moved to the new house. And so she, she loves me so very much and thank you mom for caring. Cause she decided that I'm not gonna let this, this little moody man right here uh, mess up his childhood collection that you know, he has bribed me and extorted me to go get packs for his entire life. So she made sure she put this, my Dragon Ball Z action figures, all my Dragon Ball Z cards, signed memorabilia. Like, let's be honest, I had some pretty cool stuff, you know, and I just, I just stuffed it in a, in, a, in, a, in a tote and rolled out, you know? And so she put it in the storage locker. When I was 22 years old, I said, Mom, I gotta go to the storage locker. I gotta see all my childhood stuff. Please tell me you still have it. And so she lets me go, she gives me the key, me and her go, we pulling out all this stuff. I find my, my box, my tote of Dragon Ball Z action figures and all the other action figures that don't matter that I had. But I find that, I find my vintage box, uh, my vintage binder of Pokemon cards and it's still sitting there. She didn't let anything be top on top of it and all my cool collectibles that might not have all made it because of just getting dry rotted over time. The best part is mom afforded that uh, good storage. So we had climate controlled storage. So my stuff did not warp uh, and, and, and get destroyed by water damage and just the humidity. So thanks to Bernadette, thank you so very much to my mom who kept these cards for me in a very safe environment until I was gonna reignite my inner nerd that never left. But you know, I had to at 22 years old to go grab these. That's now almost 10 years ago. And then when Pokemon Go came out, I looked at these things weekly. They've been in my safe ever since. And I'm so happy to now share them with you. Now I say let's unzip this binder and show you what I used to collect. And please, I'm trying to make this angle work, but I've got this camera right here, so don't mind that one. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and show y'all the, uh, the, vintage, the vintage set. All right, as you can see, uh, some of them have a little bit of wear on them. And I tell you, you know, it's so, so, so very sad that back in the day, you thought putting Pokemon cards, putting holographic cards, any cards in a binder was the way to save them. But truth be told, you have to sleeve them first. Sadly, I did not do that. But 
I am a person who doesn't buy a toy in the box and leave it in the box, buy a card in a pack and leave it in the pack, but I am someone who takes care of things. So besides putting them in here, I probably rarely ever touch them after that besides to reorganize them from time to time. So I promise you there's still some good quality cards in here and probably some that I messed up a little, but I always have taken care of things. I'm just a caretaker of these items, as I like to say. So this is part of the all-time debate. Uh, Jonathan thinks Mewtwo is my favorite Pokemon. Mewtwo has always been one of, if not my favorite Pokemon. I do like dark and, at the time, psychic Pokemon, which I just assumed were dark. And as you can see, Mewtwo makes his debut, you know, right here in the front of my binder. And how could you not love Mewtwo with the Pokemon movie 2000 that came out? I mean, him and Mew just going at it. I've still got my collectible card from there. What a coincidence in what I'm explaining. But right there, the Pokemon card that you get from the movie theater. Uh, and I, it was just my jam, you know. And I, so we got Alakazam, one of my absolute favorites. Dark Alakazam. And then we got a, a Haunter. And then we got Sabrina's Gengar. Very, very cool. And Sabrina's Alakazam. So Alakazam and Mewtwo have always been some of my favorite ones and possibly why the sheet is floating. And then we're going to get that fixed uh, pretty soon. I got some more sheets. So uh, I don't know if you can see the backside. Yeah, you can. So right here, you got Hypno, more Alakazams, uh, Slowbro, Slow King, Alakazam, Mr. Mime. I mean, you got so many really cool, really, really, really neat cards. Um, I, I have Gengar here. He's not holographic, but hey, I liked him. Uh, also, you got uh, my guy Eevee, right? Vaporeon. So you've got Tentacruel. Uh, you have Magneton, Dark Magneton. I don't. I never was good enough. Good enough. <laughs> it's like Venonat. I was never good at finding first edition stuff. So I have very few first editions in my vintage childhood collection. But of course, as an adult, I want to make sure I collect the best. Uh, I got a Shining Gyarados right there, which is absolutely beautiful. I hope you can see that one. Uh, I think that's the Shining Gyarados that I might have slipped in here after uh, I bought that set of Pokemon cards when we did that video in, the very, in, in a while in the past. Uh, we got Lieutenant Surge's Raichu, another cool card. Always a great to have Chansey in the, in the set. She's base set. And then we got Dark Dugtrio, uh, which we know. We know Dugtrio is my jam right there. Uh, <coughs> wheezing, no? Okay. All right, so of course we got a couple more. Uh, you know, we got basically Dark Squirtle, which is Team Rocket Squirtle. Uh, and he's like... Oh, this is a first edition, but he's, he's like Portuguese or something. But anyway, you can see a ton of other ones. Gyarados has always been one of my absolute favorite cards. And so I've got a bunch of cool ones. Uh, Promo Mewtwo. He's always been a scary looking card, you know? Uh, Giovanni has, I, I think I was supposed to be a supervillain uh, because my favorite movie is American Gangster. Uh, my other favorite movie is Lord of War. And then, of course, I love Pursuit of Happiness. So I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to be uh, somebody I'm not, but Giovanni speaks to me. <laughs> I'm not a bad dude. I just, I don't know. I just like Giovanni and, uh, and at least his character because he had a Mewtwo probably. But yeah, so here's my Dark Gyarados, Dark Blastoise, non-holographic, uh, sadly. Uh, Graham pulled a Dark Blastoise holographic in our Pokemon battle. I have... Uh, you know, some, some, some non-vintage in here as well. That's about when I stopped collecting uh, was in these sets. But yeah, as you can see, let's just start flipping through some of them a little faster. But, you know, we've got uh, Erica's Venusaur. We got Nido King, uh, Giovanni's Nido King, a ton of Nido Queens. Pretty neat. Uh, excuse me, Beedrill. So, you know, we're going to have some hit and miss holographics. Charizard's coming. I do have several Charizards. Uh, we got, uh, you know, Cobra <laughs> or Snake. That's his name spelled backwards for Arbok. Hey, look, Dark Blastoise holographic, non-first edition. Bunch of holographics from the Dark Blastoise. Little Polyrath in the set. Uh, Hitmonchan, uh, Brock's Rhydon. I've always enjoyed Rhydon. I thought he was really cool. Uh, and there's Dark Doug Trio. You know, Logan Paul gave me the hot dog, so... You know, we got we to gotta respect the Doug Trio here on the channel. Uh, another cool set, so some more Machamps and some more fighting Pokemon. But over here, my pre-release Aerodactyls, always thought those were cool. We got Blaine's Moltres, a bunch of Zapdos, Moltres, and Articunos. Always have loved the legendary birds. Uh, very, very, and fossil birds, you know. Can't, can't be too mad at Aerodactyl. 
Uh, Ditto's always been great. Kangaskhan, bunch of Raichus. My favorite card, as far as artwork, my favorite card for artwork is going to be this Flareon. Always thought that was such a beautiful card. Um, and then I got a cool card in here. I hope I can, there it is. I knew it was close. This card right here, so Giovanni's uh, Persian. So Giovanni's Persian, my brother brought me, you know, you gotta realize I'm eight years younger than him. So he brought me to uh, the mall and they used to have the mall kiosk. Like if only I'd have known, I'd have spent my allowance on that mall kiosk to buy packs and leave them sealed. But he brought me to the mall and there's Blaine's Charizard. There's all kinds of cards that I probably should have chosen. But he says, pick a card, whatever one you want, and I'm gonna buy it for you. And I didn't care about the price or anything else. I was trying to, if anything, be a little less than, than greedy. So this one was like probably 15 or 25 bucks back then. And I was like, okay, this one. And I picked, uh, not Blaine's Charizard, like I should have probably picked Blaine's Charizard, but I picked uh, Giovanni's Persian. Barrett actually watches my channel. So Barrett, uh, if you're watching, drop a comment or I'm gonna send you this video knowing that I, I brought you into one of my YouTube videos. And then of course, uh, I got a non-holographic Dr uh, Dragonite, uh, Dratini, love my Dratinis, uh, Dragonair, this is my favorite uh, dark Pokemon art. Dark Charmeleon has always been just a great card. Love Arcanine, uh, one of my favorite ones. Meowth is holographic. And then here we go. Uh, we got Typhlosion, we got Dark Charizard, we got Dark Charizard, uh, another Typhlosion, uh, Charizard base set two, Charizard base set two, and then of course a few other amazing fire Pokemon like Blaine's Arcanine. So just kind of flipping through, I'll start speeding up a little bit, but uh, Snorlax, a bunch of other great cards. This White Diamond Chansey, never knew if it was really worth a ton of money, but I do know that it was White Diamond, which was really cool. And as a car dealer, you know, and you're in the car business, White Diamond Paint or Iridescent Pearl Tricoat, which is another name for White Diamond, uh, that's cool for me. So it spoke to me as a child, speaks to me now. Holographic Chansey base set too, because I, apparently I did not read packs well enough. But I've learned, I've learned. Now I can educate, so that way you cannot make the same mistakes I did, right? Your cards will be worth triple if you get the right ones. But anyway, just a bunch of other sets, going through them, see if I notice anything cool. A little Mr. Mime action right there. Oh, Aaron, Aaron's cool in Pokemon Go. Let's see, oh, Houndour. I like Houndour. Houndour, Houndour, I can't ever read the names, y'all know that. Uh, let's see here. I do have some more cool stuff. My Mew, I do enjoy Mew, Mew promo. Love him to death. I need a holographic Mew. I still think I only have like tag team holographic Mews. Let's see here. Oh look, got Togepi right there. Yeah, Togepi. And then I do have some non-holographics double stacked. You will never see that, uh, that sacrilege of putting holographic stuff between other holographics. And of course I got my, uh, my first edition Dark Flareon in whatever language that is. Uh, I think that's Spanish, but I don't know. I, I'm not gonna try and do that. Hey look, Clefairy Doll, I'm good at getting those. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, this is my collection. I wanted to get to this point. So as you can see, I've got some cool Digimon cards from back in the day. Uh, this is where I guess I started transitioning to Digimon. Uh, I do have a big tote of, uh, not a tote, like a shoebox full of um, uh, common cards that are non-holographics, but I do have that. But you know, it's just so fun to collect these things. So let's go through a few more and, uh, and just kind of show you the history of my collection. Got a few more cool ones. This is just so fun to go through. I, I, I will say that I am disappointed on the level of holographics I had as a child. Uh, that's why when I started collecting Pokemon cards again in 2016 and 2017 during Pokemon Go, because uh, Ruku, that's my game name, but Ruku, or if I'm good at the game, Lord Ruku, eh, you know, whatever. That's what, that's what they've named me over the time because I've, I've been in a lot of games. So if you ever played a video game with me and you saw the word Ruku, uh, drop a comment because I've played a lot of them like Anime Melee, uh, some Bleach games that I've done pretty well where I've been you know, a, a captain and lieutenant and, uh, and a couple other ones. There was a, Lord, there was a, war, a war game where Lord Ruku came because I was the one of the top people ever in the game, so it's just spent a lot of money on the thing. But anyway, going through it, if you ever, if you ever played a game with me, drop a comment, that'd be cool, that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, Pokemon Go, I was out until two in the morning. I took vacation to play Pokemon Go, 
So for anybody that's like, Grant's not a real OG, like get out of here, okay? No one takes vacation and wastes their vacation to go play Pokemon Go until two o'clock in the morning. And so anyway, a bunch of baseball cards. I know I have some other cool cards too. I got like some Michael Jordan cards and stuff. I just don't know how valuable they are. I need to go through these and look at them. But yeah, as you can see, uh, I got my Topps Chrome, which is really cool. That box right now, Topps Chrome is going for $10,000. It's so crazy. But yeah, I got Topps Chrome Charizard. So when, hey, when this thing's worth $500,000 and mine's a PSA, I'll let you know. That'd be cool. Uh, yep, so that's uh, Marowak, you know, Cubone. Sorry about your mom right there. Nido King. I think Nido King's one of my favorite Pokemon as well. Uh, and then, hey, we got another Charizard right here. Mew! Only holographic Mew I had as a child. Very sad. Love that card, though. He's just in the clouds. And then you just got some more Tops cards. Some more Tops cards. Well, Arbok, Nido King again, Charizard, Charmander, Charmeleon, Dragonair. And we got uh, Squirtle, and I'm not, War Tortoise. War, War Tortle. We got War Tortle and Blastoise. And uh, sorry, I got a little bit of left on my battery. Got some, uh, so here's Michael Jordan right there. Uh, another Michael Jordan card, Pat Rap sign card, uh, and a few other ones. So those are nice, very, very nice. And then just to kind of finish her off, showing you the rest of them, some more Tops cards and some more normal base set and base set two cards. But uh, yeah, pretty neat little Squirtle right there. Some more Topps movie cards. Those are cool. Pokemon 2000. And then a Dragonite uh, Topps Chrome, which is cool. There's a line through the whole card, so I don't know what happened there. But yeah, overall, just really interesting, really neat. This is one of my favorite Mewtwo cards I've ever had, which is him throwing uh, his, his attack. And uh, there's Lugia, you know. So all in all, I hope that uh, this was enjoyable to you. I, I hope that you tune in for all of the Aoki videos. Please drop a comment if you're excited about that. I think it's really neat, and Steve Aoki is one of our absolute most pronounced and prominent DJs there are. He's worth like 100 million bucks. Dude's an awesome guy uh, and super, super humble for our conversations on the phone. Uh, so I don't know why someone that is so amazing is wanting me, little old uh, 72,000 subscriber channel to come out there, but maybe he sees something great in us and our future content. So. That being said, I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Please don't forget to power up that like button, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we're trying to catch all those likes that we possibly can. So as I said, please smash and power up that like button. Also, don't forget that I 100% believe in you. I know you can do anything you set your mind to and never let anyone tell you any differently. Hope you have a fantastic afternoon, and I will see you on the next one.